Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and a very warm welcome if you're new. I want to start this video by saying a big thank you to everyone who has been continuously supporting this channel. Your subs, likes, and comments are much appreciated and really motivate me to keep going. We've recently hit 800 subs on the channel, which is very exciting. I'm slowly working my way up to the next big milestone, and I can't wait to celebrate it with you all. You guys are awesome. With that said, let's get into today's video. Today's video is extra exciting because it's for a collab. Me and a group of doll friends in my Discord server decided we wanted to do something futuristic. Some of us went with a more dystopian theme, and I decided I wanted to make a cyberpunk cyborg character. My partner and I recently watched Cyberpunk Edge Runners, and it got me super inspired. For my doll, I wanted to create a female character that is equally cute and unhinged. I wanted to use some pretty pastel colors, but also some black and darker colors to create the perfect balance between adorable and a little bit crazy. I was also inspired by the tech parts of a cyborg and wanted her to have some exposed wires and very obvious electronic cyborg parts. And for the fun of it, I decided that she's the kind of cyberpunk gal that would definitely have a weapon and a way to make a speedy getaway when she gets herself into trouble. I drew her concept art on live streams, which I'll link for you below if you want to watch it. The doll I'm going to be using for this character is... Monster High's G3 Frankie Stein. They were an obvious choice for this character because of their bionic leg and unnatural skin tone. I also let myself be inspired by the sparks and lightning motifs that Frankie has. I want to make it clear that while my character is female, I am aware that G3 Frankie uses non-binary pronouns, and if you hear me using she, her in this video, I'm referring to my own character alone and not trying to misgender Frankie. And with that, let us away to the work table! As with any other doll custom, I start by cutting Frankie's hair close to their scalp. They have very pretty saran hair, and since it's a brand new doll, I'll be saving it to use in future projects. Then, I dunk the head in some freshly boiled water to soften the vinyl. The G3 dolls have thicker, harder vinyl heads, so they're a little more difficult to get off and susceptible to breakage. I used a little tool to help wrangle my Frankie's head loose, but if yours does break, Delightful has a really great video showing how to fix it. With some gentle prying, I finally managed to get the head off. <gasps> Once that crisis was averted, I'm left with this. Now I can scrape around inside their head using a cuticle tool until all the hair is on the inside, and use a tweezer to pull out all the remaining hair plugs. I used some 100% pure acetone to remove their factory makeup, and used a mixture of acetone and sandpaper to remove the stitches on their body. This way I'm left with a nice clean canvas. For my character Cyborg Leg, I'm going to use this Pro Marker to make it shiny. This isn't my idea though, I saw a zombie corn doing this and just had to try it out for myself. It looks so cool! Before I start rooting her, I'm poking in some iridescent strands and some neon scooby strings. Because these strings are thick, I widen the hole with a needle before attempting to shove them inside. Once they're in, I wrap the ends in some silver thread to make them look more like wires. Now she's ready for rooting. I separate a plug's worth of hair from the hank, wrap it halfway over my finger, slip it onto the needle, and stab that into an existing hole in the scalp. I repeat that using a rainbow of white, purple, pink, and blue. I lost some footage here, but I also flocked her head to give it a shaved look. I started by painting the head purple, then used some cut up yarn and glue to flock with. If you want to try it for yourself, I followed the method used by Delightful in this video. 
I love how it came out. I made some basic patterns for her clothes using the plastic wrap and tape method. And I'm gonna start by cutting the pants pattern from this piece of black stretchy cotton. I cut on the fold so that I end up with a piece like this. I also cut out the waistband and the cuffs. Then I place the two leg pieces right sides facing and sew up the crotch seam. Before sewing up the butt seam though, I attach the waistband. Once attached, I can sew up the back and leave a little gap for the zipper. I also gather the bottom of the pant legs and attach them to the cuffs. This gives it that poofy effect that cargo pants sometimes have. Now I can fold the pants lengthwise, aligning them at the crotch, and sew up the inner seam to close the legs. I turn them over and voila, cute pants. Then all I need to do is add the zipper in the back. I have this pretty hot pink metallic fabric that I want to use to make her a shirt. So I cut out the pieces and use glue to attach the two front pieces before sewing it together. I made some mistakes and kind of fudged it in the back, <laughs> but it's fine, you won't see that. I used that same metallic fabric to add some cool details to the pants. To make the jacket, I use this sheer yet neon iridescent fabric. I love this stuff, it's so cool. I start by sewing the two pattern pieces of the hood together and hem the front. Then I sew that to the next seam of the bodice and hem that as well. I made the sleeves and added cuffs like I did for the pants and sew those to the hoodie at the shoulder seams. Now I can fold it together right size facing and sew up the side seams. Finally, I hem the bottom seam and we have a cute cropped hoodie. I really like the shoes that Frankie came with, so I'm just going to bulk up the soles a bit for my character using foam sheets. I cut out some strips that are the same width as the platform soles and glue those to the shoe, making sure that the seam is at the back. Once the glue is dry, I heat the foam in sections with a lighter and use some sculpting tools to indent lines. Be careful not to burn yourself! I also use some of that foam to create cyberware for her head. To make her leg fins, I roll out some polymer clay and use this stencil to cut out the shapes. Once baked, it becomes hard enough that I can use a wood carving tool to carve out some details. I also carve holes where I plan to put some magnets. Then I mix a two-part epoxy glue and use that to secure some tiny magnets in place. This will keep the fins removable and make dressing her a whole lot easier. I use my chrome marker to paint one of the fins silver. I also really like the earrings that Frankie came with, so I used that same chrome marker to make them silver and painted the head cyberware with it as well. Then I cover those in some glossy varnish to protect the paint. For her accessories, I had these files from Thingiverse 3D printed in some clear blue resin. I also bought her this toy skateboard. I use my chrome marker to paint the chain of the chainsaw and this grit at the side where you pull to start the motor. I also paint some parts of the backpack and the silver parts of the skateboard. I tried mixing colors with regular acrylic paint and alcohol inks, but it just wasn't vibrant or opaque enough. So I shifted to painting the black parts, like the backpack and the shoe soles, while I waited for the neon paint I ordered to arrive. Now we're cooking. I used the neon pink straight from the tube to block out some of the smaller details like the letters on the backpack, but I also mixed some more pastel colors for things like the shoes. I didn't bother thinning the paint this time because I like the texture. I think it makes it look like these are cyber parts she painted and customized herself. I also added some small details and dry brushing to make everything look a little more worn. Once everything is painted, I give it a coat of matte varnish to protect the paint job. For the unpainted parts of her accessories, like the blade of the chainsaw, I'm going to cover them in a clear UV top coat. 
This is going to protect the paint job, but also make it extra shiny and see-through, which I think helps give it an even more futuristic vibe. To finish it off, I add the bendy bits of plastic straws to the chainsaw for a handle and the backpack for straps, using some more epoxy glue. Now we can finally mask off the hair and take the doll outside for a coat of sealant. For this doll, I used the airbrush version of MSC. It's more readily available here, albeit expensive, and I recently got an airbrush, so I thought, why not? I don my gas mask and mix two parts of Mr. Color with one part of Mr. Rapid Thinner before spraying the doll with a little craft airbrush. I'll add a link to it below if you want to get one for yourself. Once dry, I start by blushing her face with some blue soft pastels. Because she's a cyborg character, I'm not trying to add any natural tones and just keeping the shading in the same color family as the existing skin tone. I also do the same with the body, excluding her cyborg leg. I also use pastels to add in where I want her panels and rivets to go, since I'm gonna need some shading on those areas anyway. Then I take a blue watercolor pencil and start drawing the lines as neatly as I can. I found it really hard to build up color on this lower leg for some reason. I think it's because it's a different kind of vinyl. Once I'm happy, I take her outside for another spray of sealant. I lost some footage here as well, so excuse the jump in progress, but once I've drawn in some more details like her eyes and lashes, I go in with a white pencil to add highlights. I also take a light blue to add some shading. At some point with this leg, I just gave up trying and decided I'd do it with paint. I use some pink to fill in her band-aid and her sclera. I'm going for unnatural colors here as well, and forcing myself to draw really tiny irises for that crazed look, you know. I also use a darker pink to fill in her lips, but I leave a gap where her teeth will be. This was about as far as my pencils could take me, so I give her another coat of sealant and opt to finish her with acrylic paints. Before I do that though, I line up the leg fins I made earlier with the doll, marking the spots where the magnets need to go, and carve into the plastic to make crevices. Then use some more epoxy glue to secure them in place. Excuse the, um, awkward pose. <laughs> Once those are dry, we can continue with the face up. Here I did thin down the paint, as it means that I can paint much thinner and more precise lines. I use paint to neaten up the lines I already drew, make the colors more saturated, and amp up the highlights. Then I can focus on details of her face, like adding the teeth, making the black blacker, adding her eyelashes, and correcting the colors of her eyes and lips. I also added some shading to her sclera and brightened up her eyebrows to match her hair better. Finally, I can finish off the band-aid on her nose and use a dotting tool to add her teeny tiny pupils. I add some shine to her lips using varnish. I also use some black UV polish to give her a tiny real gel manicure. After adding some piercings, we can unmask her hair. Yes, that looks great! This part is always kind of difficult to film, but I separate a bit of hair for her fringe and part her hair in the middle before tying it off into ponytails. This looks adorable already. Because this is synthetic hair, it can be styled using heat, so I heat up a metal chopstick and curl her hair in sections. And with that, we can dress her up, and she's done. So, what do you think? 
I'm surprised at how happy I am with her. Throughout this project, I kept second guessing what I was doing and I really had to trust the process for this one. But once it all came together, it really did come together. I think a good name for our cyborg girl is Terra Bites. I like that it's a tech pun, but it also kind of sounds like a warning, you know, careful, terabytes. I'm also kind of in love with her hair. It came out much bigger than I meant for it to, but it makes her look like an electrocuted dandelion, and it's adorable. There is also a kind of 80s vibe to her now that I'm seeing it all together, but I'm not mad about it. I think I struggled the most with her teeth. This is the first doll I'm making with an open smile, and I'm not sure I really managed to get the illusion quite as convincing as I would have wanted it to be, but I did enjoy doing something so different from my usual style. I think she has the wackiest eyes I've ever done. What did you like about Tara? Was there anything you would change? Let me know in the comments down below. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching! I hope you enjoyed this video just as much as I did. If you like this video and you think I deserve it, please consider giving it a big old fashioned thumbs up and subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. It's a great free way to support my channel and I love interacting with you guys. In my next video, I'm doing another exciting collab. If I can get it done in time, that is. <laughs> So if you don't want to miss that when it comes out, stick around, turn on notifications, and as always, stay golden. I'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye. Mm. Well, there's water on my keyboard, but I think I can... Ah. Uh -huh.